So today, um, so I'm Sarah Riggs, and today I'll be presenting work that my student Nicholas Gardella completed. Um, and also this was in part um, of the funding that we were, uh, that was completed as part of the CCI funding. Um, and then also there's more work that's forthcoming, but um, we're still in the process of um, analyzing those results. Uh, however, today what I'll be presenting on is um, titled Performance, Workload, Emotion, and Self-Efficacy, of novice programmers using AI co-generation. Um, so, and this was also done in collaboration with um, our colleague in uh, computer science, um, Raymond Pet Pet Pettit. So first off, I'm gonna give an introduction to the literature that exists out there um, with regards to AI co-generation. So um, you probably know at this point that AI is good at helping with simple programming tasks. So here, um, Nicholas, uh, my student, asked ChatGPT to create a Python script to add up a bunch of numbers. Um, you can see on the right hand side that the resulting code is actually pretty good. Um, it uses standard library functions. Um, it's well commented um, and generally appears to do what Nicholas asked it to do, which was to add up a bunch of numbers. Um, there are also more um, increasingly more options that um, of, with regards to AI tools, um, and actually they're pretty they're high quality and they're also free. Um, we have tab um, developers like Tab Nine and um, Amazon Q developers, um, chat options like ChatGPT, as you saw in the um, previous slide, um, and then also DIY and open source options like CodeLama and Continue.dev. Um, the focus of our study is um, GitHub Copilot, which is an aid, um, and this is a term that we'll be using throughout the presentation. So aid stands for artificial intelligence driven development um, environment. So we'll, I'll, I'll use the word either aid or AI, um, but we're referring to the same thing, which was um, GitHub Copilot for the purpose of the study. Um, also, um, it, with regards to GitHub Copilot, the claim um, is that it will help people learn faster um, and also code better. Um, and it is also the reason we, another reason we use it is that it's readily available for free to verified students, teachers, and also open source maintainers. Um, and again, this is the AI that we have chosen for the purposes of this study. So in light of, of the existence of AI and helping with um, students programming, we're hoping that the AI won't do the students work for them, right? Um, you can see in this prompt here with ChatGPT that um, if uh, Nicholas asks uh, the ChatGPT to do their Python programming homework for them, they responded that, um, however, I can't complete your homework for you. Um, so we hope that perhaps there is protection um, against that, um, but we see that actually it will um, do many of the tasks that students are, you know, typically assigned to do um, in their computer science programming tasks, um, uh, classes. Um, and in, in fact, AI is actually very good at these simple types of problems that students typically encounter in their um, CS courses um, as they're working on improving their proficiency um, um, in computer science. Um, it's pretty much what you see here. Um, so they're using GitHub Copilot here. You can take some text um, from the specifications um, that are usually provided in computer science courses. Um, and then also bring it into the context of the AI. Um, and then from there, it can allow you, uh, the AI will collaborate with the student or, or sometimes it can even do their assignment um, for them if it's prompted um, uh, in a certain way. So as a result, um, we want to know for the purpose of this study, um, this collaboration between the student and also AI. So we have the student here um, and we wanted to know how um, they perform in the presence of, uh, with and without AI, um, and then also under some time pressure. So um, if you take it uh, from the perspective of a student, um, typically there's a time uh, um, a component associated with their assignments and then in, uh, in the amount of time they have to complete an assignment. Um, so that being said, uh, we wanted to, to see 
if the student with the AI under time pressure, what would the end result be? And in terms of literature, there has, um, given that this is, a, is an emerging field, um, there were only, at the time of uh, when we conducted this literature review, um, for, before publication, um, there might be more uh, studies that have come out since then, um, given this is a hot topic as well. We found three relevant studies that measure performance um, with when people were working with AI. And actually of those studies, those three studies, um, there was only one study that showed that there was a performance benefit um, um, from using AI. Um, also, another aspect that we are interested in is looking at um, the well-being. So from the human or the user perspective, uh, namely the students here, um, what, how does using AI affect them? So from the three studies we actually found, um, they've reported some you know, vague positive effects of using AI. That include, for one, um, perhaps being less stressed um, and also more eager to learn. Um, some folks found, um, students found it um, helpful, uh, the AI helpful, uh, which is positive. Um, and then also in terms of their experiences, either it being neutral or generally um, somewhat positive. However, um, you can see that based on the studies that have reported this um, information that we don't necessarily see a concrete benefit of using AI, um, which is, uh, and also some of the measures that we actually care about as well. Um, and we'll go into that in, in, on the next slide. So um, for our study, we specifically wanted to see how, again, uh, as a reminder, how the student um, uh, and AI, it, with or without AI, um, and under time pressure, what was the result um, and how does it namely affect performance? Um, also, that's the first thing. Second is workload. Uh, third uh, measure we uh, took into account was emotion. Um, and then also, lastly, this is important, especially for uh, uh, beginning CS students, that their self-efficacy or their ability to think that they can do uh, complete a task. Um, so again, we wanted to see whether or not student working alone and also working with AI, if there were differences in these four measures that we collected. All right, so this takes us to our two research questions. Um, namely, how do AIDS or AI, um, with regards to research question one, how does it affect performance, workload, emotion, and also self-efficacy of no uh, novice programmers under time pressure? And again, we focus on novice programmers because um, the literature there isn't that much literature um, specifying like how um, the CS uh, curriculum should incorporate AI um, into um, the curriculum um, to date. That's the first uh, research question. The second one is how do AIDS or AI influence the effects of additional time spent programming? So is there a change over time on novices' performance and also self-efficacy? Um, and we'll... I'll talk about how we measure this um, um, in a few slides um, um, when, when I go through the methods. All right, so this takes us to our methods and how we uh, uh, conducted this study. Um, we, uh, to examine the aforementioned research questions, we recruited 17 students from an introductory CS course. Um, this was programming in Python. On the day of participation, um, 11 students that were recruited identified as novices and six identified as intermediate. Um, even though they were all in this introductory uh, computer science course, I, um, they um, technically were all novices at that point. Um, we also had mostly female students and also mostly Asian students. However, there were other genders and races represented um, as you see here. Um, so in terms of the tasks, we asked um, the participants or the students to complete. Um, the tasks came from the human eval um, data set um, by, that was developed by OpenAI. Um, and this is a commonly used uh, 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 a task uh, set that is used to ev uh, evaluate and compare large, learning, uh, large language models uh, for scale. Um, however, we chose to modify the presentation of these tasks um, because, again, we cared about how people uh, completed tasks um, that would allow for um, the human subjects, the students that we recruited to work on these problems. 
um, rather than um, typically it's used for just um, evaluating AI alone. So from the human eval uh, test, um, uh, uh, a battery of tests, um, we, our tasks, uh, we, uh, there's 164. And what we did was we had nine teaching staff at UVA um, filtered these tasks. Um, so eventually there were four task pools. So you can see task pool A, B, C, and D. Um, and then to have um, within each task pool, eight tasks um, from uh, the overall database. Um, so again, all of these task pools were also equivalent in difficulty. Um, and I'll talk about that um, in the next slide. So for each pool, uh, task pool, we placed um, easier tasks at the beginning. Um, and also one of the specific uh, things that we told the participants to do is that they had to complete the tasks in order. Um, and we'll talk about how this was, um, how they were assessed after the fact um, in a few slides. Um, and that they would increase in difficulty. Um, and then you can also see um, that um, our teaching uh, uh, staff also, you know, had a rough difficulty level. So we also made sure that they were relatively equivalent um, across uh, task pools. Um, you can see that it kind of increased in order uh, in difficulty and then also decreased for the, um, the, the last couple of um, uh, tasks. Um, so the last couple of tests kind of decreased in difficulty, but it did require specialized knowledge, like perhaps sometimes a trick function. Um, and again, well, it reiterate why this task difficulty, um, this we chose it uh, was difficult, uh, was important later in this um, presentation. Um, overall, we used a within subjects design, um, and this meant that participants experienced the AI condition and also the solo condition. So that is without AI um, for two blocks each. And again, we wanted to make sure that it was some of the whether the you know there was learning effects and also um, you know from a sound experimental design standpoint that we have to have participants do uh, certain conditions more than once, ideally. Um, we also counterbalanced the ordering um, that the participants saw each task pool and also uh, when they had the AI uh, and also when they did not have the AI. So here we have two hypothetical participants, participant one and also participant two, and you can see that they completed the task pools um, in different orders. Um, and also when they experienced AI um, was also in different orders as well. We also um, took a repeated measures um, four times. Um, uh, specifically, we took um, the emotion measurement before, you can see that um, this, this colorful block here, um, at the uh, this is generally the order of uh, um, a sequence of events for each of the blocks that we took the emotional effect before and also after the conclusion of each block. Um, and then we also took the score of their task itself. Um, and then we also allowed um, participants to give them the self grade to reflect on the performance. Um, and then also the NASA TLX, which is this uh, assessment of the workload um, using the, uh, uh, the NASA task load index, which is a commonly used way to me measure wor workload. All right. So in general, we brought participants in uh, for a study. This is what they would typically see. They would actually get a lot of training um, beforehand before we um, set them off to do the, the, the four experimental blocks. Um, but generally in the procedure, participants worked in Visual Studio Code um, and they were given again training um, and they worked on each of the tasks sequentially um, in Visual Studio. Um, which was an integrated development environment um, with GitHub Copilot activated and also deactivated depending on which block it was. Um, you can also see that there is a timer um, on the lower left. Um, and then the task description itself um, were taken out of the uh, Python file and moved to a PDF um, so that the GitHub Copilot would not have access to that task unless specifically the participant brought that, con uh, that context into the text file itself. Um, because the participants uh, work sequentially, the tasks were scored ordinarily. 
Um, so uh, meaning that if a participant did not or a student did not complete um, all the tests or tasks, they would not get credit for it. So in this hypothetical example um, for a hypothetical participant, uh, if we had a participant uh, was on task 71, uh, when the timer went off, which was a 20 minutes in um, each of the blocks or 20 minutes, they would only get credit uh, for the five prior tasks, which are the, these ones which are completed um, when we uh, score them. So they would get a score of five um, in this instance. Uh, we also measured, uh, again, workload using the NASA, NASA TLX, which is, stands for NASA Task Load Index. Um, uh, so this, again, is a common uh, measure of workload. Um, the dimensions of workload that are measured with the NASA TLX um, include mental demand, physical demand, temporal demand, performance measure, effort, and also frustration. And this, again, um, the, the way we um, collect this information is that we have the participants give self-reports um, of how uh, they felt regards, regarding each of these dimensions. Uh, we also made sure to highlight the fact that for the performance uh, measure, the anchors are counterintuitive uh, compared to the other questions in the questionnaires, uh, which are the, the anchors are a little bit different. So um, in the past, we found that this to be uh, somewhat problematic. Um, and then we also measured emotion on two dimensions. So one being valence, which went from left to right. Um, and then also an up down um, uh, with regards to uh, arousal um, or, or the intensity of the assessment. Um, given that this scale was two dimensional as, in a sense, um, it had a lot going on. We took time to explain this very carefully to participants. Uh, we also provided them with this image um, so they knew um, the, uh, with regards to the Likert options. So we made sure that we uh, accurately collected how they felt um, at the time. So given that we measured uh, motion before and after each block, we had a snapshot of how they felt before and after each block as well. Um, so this allowed us to compare how they felt prior to completing the programming pool and after, uh, and then also allowed us to see perhaps whether or not there was an emotional effect of that programming experience before or after. So whether this could be changes in valence, um, um, you can see that we had the two measures, valence or arousal, um, and then we can see uh, whether or not there were uh, changes between these um, uh, two instances where we captured um, each of these snapshots. Um, also, this allowed us to see whether or not there was a more positive or negative emotional effect after each block. Finally, we also measure self-efficacy. Um, and again, this was their uh, ability to, um, you know, perceive whether or not they are able to complete the task. So for self-efficacy, we were very careful to make sure that the participants were, were evaluating their own performance and not the AI's performance. Um, however, when they did work with AI, they were asked to grade themselves and also the AI separately. However, for the purposes of the study, uh, we were mostly interested in the grade that they gave themselves and whether this changed over time as well. Um, we made an assumption that this could translate to self-efficacy if, in fact, the participant perceived themselves performing well, um, and then we would expect them um, uh, to perform well on something um, perhaps in the future as well. And again, this is part of the uh, integral part of the definition for self-efficacy as well. All right, so now I'm going to go um, talk about the into the results. Um, in general, with regards to the statistics uh, we use, uh, we took a, a very conservative, conservative approach based on our sample size. Um, and depending on the, on the type of data that we collected, um, again, they are very different uh, from each other, um, the measures that we, uh, we collected. We used a combination of t-tests, pair t-tests, um, sign rank t uh, tests and also sign tests, um, with the co most conservative being the sign test um, and then the least conservative being the t test, pair t tests. Um, and again, the test we used was based on the type of data we had um, and then also whether or not the assumptions were met 
Um, and then deciding whether or not uh, which test we could use. Um, again, leaning more uh, on the conservative side. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the results in terms of uh, relating it back to the research questions. Um, with regards to research questions, re research question one, we were interested in looking at the differences between programming alone um, and then also programming with AI. So here we have um, uh, all the different measures we took. Um, and then when, um, on the second column, we have the change and uh, whether or not it was significant or not. Um, so we have the changes represented between programming alone um, and also programming uh, with AI um, and then for each of the measures we collected. Again, the descriptions on the right are described um, here we see are describing the trends that we saw with the data and its uh, interpretation. Um, however, of the three uh, of the measures, all the measures we collected, only the three bolded ones, which was score, um, the task load index, uh, the mental uh, dimension, and then also the task load index, the effort dimension, um, were the ones that reached significant significance. Um, now I'll go uh, over the significant, significant uh, results one by one. Um, overall, um, in using between no AI and using AI, we saw that um, in general that there was a significant increase in performance. So again, they were more successful. Uh, with regards to workload, again, so only the two dimensions that were significant were the mental and also the effort. Uh, we saw a significant decrease in mental workload. Uh, again, this was our, our interpretation is that they were, I guess, thinking less hard. Um, and also we saw a significant decrease in effort. So they were trying less hard as well. All right. So that um, was with regards to research question one. Um, now I'm going to talk about research question two. Um, and then this is um, comparing within the blocks um, or the two uh, blocks that were uh, equivalent to each other. So we, again, um, as a reminder, we had the participants complete two blocks without AI and then two blocks with AI. And we want to see whether or not there was a difference between the first and the second time they experienced these conditions. Um, and this allowed us to understand whether or not, again, there was a learning effect. With regards to AI use, we do see, um, so again here, uh, we do see a significant improvement uh, over time with regards to the score. Um, and it's also reflected in their self rate as well. Um, on the other hand, um, we see that there wasn't any significance for the solo conditions so when they were not working with AI. Um, we there did overall see a, a, um, a similar performance between the two blocks. And again, they also remained non-significant between the two blocks um, when there were no uh, AI use. And also there was no change um, in self-grade as well. So now I'll go into kind of the overall uh, concluding remarks regarding this study, um, uh, first starting with discussion and then following up with the overall conclusions. So overall, um, we saw that based on our study that with regards to just performance alone, that there was a benefit to using AI. Um, and we also definitely want to consider the possibility that um, given there's a, there's a limitation of our study that um, our, our study did not have um, the, allow the students to have in, uh, access to the internet. Um, and then also this was um, experimental design choice by choice. Again, we solely wanted to see the effects of AI um, as this was our initial study um, looking at the matter. However, there are also other examples in the literature and it wasn't clear whether or not internet use was allowed um, and when there was a performance benefit when there was uh, uh, you, uh, AI use. Um, in the two examples where internet use was allowed, there actually was um, in previous studies, uh, there was no significant performance um, uh, benefits uh, when they were, the participants had uh, AI use um, in the controlled condition. Um, this may suggest that um, the AI maybe is replacing interact access in these studies, but again, there needs to be further work looking at exactly what, uh, whether this was the case.
In terms of workload decreases that we saw um, when uh, participants, uh, the students in our study, you, when they use AI, um, this had to do namely with the mental dimension and also effort dimension, um, that these are the dimensions that typically um, have been noted to increase during programming tasks uh, with students. Um, so again, it is not surprising that we see reductions uh, when we have AI helping the students complete a task. Uh, we also have one example from the literature um, of a positive learning effect associated with a reduction of these two um, task load index measures. Um, so it may be that um, the workload decreases can potentially improve learning. Um, however, we also want to consider the possibility that um, decrease in mental workload and also effort could be associated with poor learning outcomes too, um, in the fact that it may uh, show that the students are disengaging with the task and also perhaps letting the AI take over and do most of the work. So um, that's kind of the flip side. So uh, it could go either way uh, with regards to the workload decreases. Um, in terms of, uh, uh, from emotional results, um, we didn't really see much of a difference, um, uh, even though it was trending a little bit more positively, this lack of, you know, significance may indicate that um, the AI is not necessarily making uh, you or the students feel better, um, even though it is helping you perform uh, better. Um, and then also we found that novices don't typically take credit for the AI's work. Um, and again, with regards to this, this the self-grade, um, this was an, also an important point from research question one, um, is whether or not there was a significant difference with regards to self-grade with or without AI. Um, and this suggests that perhaps the students were not taking credit for the performance gains um, when the AI was helping them perform. Um, they also recognized that they, however, they did recognize that they were performing better um, but again, not taking credit uh, for that themselves. Um, however, we do see that when they are using the AI better, so again, if we only looked at the AI blocks, um, they do improve from the first block to the second. Um, and that follows that the reason that this is happening um, is that they themselves are improving given that the AI isn't really changing between the blocks. So again, this is reflected in a self grade. And again, this was only looking at uh, the within the two blocks where there was AI use. Um, so in terms of uh, completing remarks, um, some of the limitations also include the fact that the training data could have potentially been um, uh, included some of the tasks from the human eval data set. Um, and this is a challenge because as that data set gets older, um, this perhaps will be more and more of concern. Uh, we also discussed that in detail in the conference paper that was presented and published this summer, um, but uh, we don't think that is necessarily a major concern at, at the moment. Um, also, another thing that we are thinking about doing is um, changing whether or not there is internet access in the future. Um, again, we did receive funds from CCI, and we did a follow study at BSU um, with our collaborator um, on the on the grant with um, Dr. Joseph Shelton um, at Virginia State University. Um, and again, uh, we're not I'm not presenting that today, um, um, as we're still uh, in the process of analyzing that data. Um, and lastly, the sample size of 17 um, is also a challenge. So. Again, this might not be generalizable. Um, and also the fact that it was students all from the same university um, may uh, detract from its generalizability. Um, however, again, like I mentioned, we did collect another study at BSU, another university, um, and we're hoping that um, our results become more generalizable um, as, was, as the study was very similar in nature to the one I just presented. Finally, some um, main uh, Key takeaways from the study um, is that novice programmers can be more successful with AI. Um, the ending result can, is that they can also think and try less hard with AI. Um, and then also they can improve um, AI use over time. Again, we saw that even in the short time that uh, the study took place, that there was a remarkable um, uh, significant improvements over time. 
Um, and also they took credit and ownership of this improvement as well, um, again, when there was AI use. However, they typically don't take credit for AI's work. Um, and also they don't feel that much better um, based on the emotional data that we did collect. Um, and lastly, a, kind of a few uh, plugs um, is that this again, the what I just presented was um, a paper that was published um, and also presented this summer um, at uh, the, uh, the Conference on Innovation and Technology in Computer Science and Education. Um, and also uh, this work was largely done by um, a student, Nicholas. So if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact him. Here, here is his contact information. Um, and again, we could not have done this work without the support of various um, funding agencies, including uh, this grant uh, that uh, the CCI CBN grant. Um, and this again, this work was done with our collaborator, um, the VSU component, which we haven't presented, um, uh, analyzed all the data yet, Joseph Sheldon at uh, Virginia State University. Um, and then also Nicholas was funded by the UVA Distinguished Fellowship, uh, then uh, NSF uh, NRT, um, and then also the NSF GRP as well. And um, in terms of the teaching staff that we, I mentioned earlier, in terms of sorting out all the, um, the tasks into equivalent uh, task pools, um, we'd like to thank um, everyone listed here um, in helping uh, in uh, selecting and also arranging human eval task. All right, um, and that concludes uh, my presentation and thank you for your attention.